I'd like to welcome my faculty colleagues and allow them to introduce themselves. Let's start with Ms. Devaney. Hi, Miles. Good to see you. Thanks for the introduction. Should I start now? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Um, my name is Kathleen Devaney, and I've been a faculty member at Westminster School for 22 years. I live on campus with my family, my husband, Mark DeCanner, who's Dean of Faculty, and our children, uh, Emmett, who is a recent grad, and our daughter, Samantha, who is in the fourth form. I teach history, global history for freshmen, um, and I also teach an independent study in German. And I coach JV lacrosse, with, uh, excuse me, JV soccer with long-term faculty member, uh, Peter Ulrich. I served uh, in the Dean's office uh, for four rotations, class of 2002 and six, 11 and 15, great classes. And I was also assistant head of school for seven years. And then the opportunity presented itself to grow a Horizons program. And so I jumped at it. And now I lead a Horizons program on campus. And that program is an academic um, an enrichment program for summer uh, time on our campus. And it serves the young people of Hartford grades uh, one through eight, eventually one through three now. And it has lots of opportunities for Westminster students to get involved. Um, and you didn't prompt me whether or not I had a fun fact, but I'm gonna offer my fun fact. Um, on my bedside table is uh, The Murmur of Bees, which is a book I'm very much enjoying right now. And I have to say, um, watching that video, both the slideshow and the fun ride up the hill of the greeting of families um, just reminded me of why um, I love living here, working here, and teaching these students. And I actually found it incredibly i couldn't stop smiling looking at all the students uh in the dining hall all the different frames that just remind me why we do what we do all right scott you want to go next sure i'll jump in there I, first of all welcome everybody wherever you are uh calling in for this you may be overseas you may be uh in other parts of simsbury but thanks for for jumping on a uh, quick shout out to Marty the Martlet that was at the top of the hill of that video, uh, as is our mascot, a nice way to get things going there. Um, very quickly, I've been here for a bunch of years, was appointed in the early 1980s, and like Kathleen, I've had a lot of different roles. And part of the joy of being in a community like this as a faculty member is if you stay around long enough, you can do a lot of different things that you may not have anticipated or imagined yourself doing. Uh, currently, I teach ninth and 12th grade English, or in our nomenclature, third and, uh, third and sixth form English. And I coach one of our hockey teams and our girls golf team, which started a couple years ago. Uh, I have the distinction of having had three kids that were born and raised here, all went through this, the program, uh, graduated, and then proceeded to go to college, and then all moved to California immediately. So not sure what that was all about. Uh, my spouse, Amy, is one of the librarians here and runs the chapel program. So we're pretty, pretty uh, invested in all the things that are going on here. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun. I think in terms of fun facts, going along with the concept of sort of skill sets, uh, one of my skill sets that's unknown by my colleagues and students is that I can drive the Zamboni, which in the sort of the, the nomenclature of hockey is the ice resurfacer. And that, that's a self-taught skill many years ago and i'm ready if the school is in a pinch to step in and take on that role if necessary but it's nice to be here and hopefully we can provide some information for everybody on the call today all right mr rashid you ready to go all set miles hello everyone uh thanks for for tuning in uh i'm mr rashid i am the fifth form dean, which is the dean of our junior class, uh, the class of 2021. I also serve as the director of theater, and I work in partnership with my friend Kathleen over there as the program director for SAWS, um, sorry, for Horizons at Westminster. Um, this is my 10th year. Um, I live on campus with my wife and my two boys. I have a nine-year-old and a five-year-old, uh, my nine-year-old Kareem, he is in third grade, and uh, Malcolm, his brother, is a kindergartner at a school right up the road called Terraceville. Um, 
I also teach intro to theater here, and I do a wide variety of independent studies uh, within the realm of, of theater arts. Um, I direct two productions during the school year. Uh, in the fall, I do a play, and in the winter, I do a musical. Uh, Mr. Bailey uh, shouted out The Little Mermaid, which was our, our, our very successful, <laughs> widely attended um, musical this year. Um, it was a fantastic experience. Um, and we did Medea in the fall, which was equally gratifying. Uh, behind me, you can see two of the posters from some productions I did in the past. This is my virtual classroom and my, my happy space, if you will. Um, but it's been a, a fantastic ride here at Westminster. And as uh, Mr. Stevens said, you know, I'm 10 years in and I've done many things here that I didn't think I'd ever do coming in just simply as a corridor supervisor and um, a director of theater. Um, I lived in the dorms for seven years. I was in Memorial for four years. And then I finished out my tenure in the dorms um, as a corridor supervisor in Edge House. Um, I still do uh, do some corridor supervising uh, when we're on campus um, in Squid. And you know, I just I just enjoy and relish every day that I work here with these fabulous uh, colleagues and and the wonderful students that I serve. Oh, on my bedside, I, I, I love baseball and I'm really, really missing baseball right now. Um, so I'm currently reading a book called The Cactus League, which is about a minor league team um, that is um, housed in Los Angeles, but uh, the minor league team uh, plays in Arizona and um, it follows a couple of the players and, and the coach of that team. It's, it's pretty, pretty good. And Mr. Rashid, just remind us what the best baseball team is. The best baseball team and the only team in New York City is the New York Yankees. Yay. All right, Ms. Wassiger, you're up. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome. My name is Kelly Wassiger. Um, I'm in my third year here. I'm a math teacher, assistant athletic director, and I coach first girls soccer here. Um, I live in Memorial Dorm, which is a boys dorm. Uh, with my husband and two boys. Um, one is a two-year-old black lab and a one-year-old yellow lab. Um, my husband currently works in Lakeville. We won't mention the school, but we've stolen him over here to, to Westminster for next year, and I'm really excited about that. Um, my fun fact, um, despite being somewhat athletic, I cannot swim, and so I participated in the school swimming program with a bunch of our students this past year, which is a great experience. All right, thank you. Uh, so we're gonna jump in with questions, if that's all right. Uh, first question is from Emma, and she wants to know what activities there are for new students to get acclimated to the community. I can jump in with that uh, immediately. Uh, so when school starts, um, we have our, our robust opening days. Um, and our six formers sort of lead all of the forms through a bunch of activities, getting, um, you know, everyone sort of comfortable with each other in very uncomfortable situations. Um, and, and from there, some relationships are formed. Uh, obviously, there are some kids that come in that know each other, uh, but this is really a good opportunity for the students that don't know others to, to get to know some people. Um, and then uh, shortly following that, um, the Dean's Office, we tend to uh, gather our forms together so that we could, um, you know, get the kids getting to know each other and, and speaking with each other and interacting with each other, uh, sometimes that's over food, um, also over, um, you know, activities and things like that. I've invited my form over to my house for a barbecue or we'll go downtown. Um, and do things like that to sort of get people, um, you know, comfortable and, and knowing each other. And if I could add on to that, um, I, you know, obviously one of our core values is involvement and that we firmly believe in that involving our students as, a, as this really tight knit community um, allows all of them um, to really experience the most for themselves, but also for us to be the best that we can be with all of our members being, um, really, really plugged in. 
uh, just on the nuts and bolts, we have a summer opportunity fair for our kids to learn about in the fall, to learn about the different pieces that we offer sort of organizationally. Um, we also have affinity and alliance groups, uh, coffee houses and things of that nature. But oftentimes that advisory um, that you have that you're set up with in the beginning, that's with your uh, advisor and you meet uh, performers, uh, you meet your peers, uh, you hear what they're involved in, you have an extracurricular activity that introduces you to other people as well. Um, that piece is in really important to us. Um, we, we know that the, that the first introduction to school can be hard and, and maybe even off-putting as one sort of acclimates to a new environment, but we're there. It's, it's a student's journey, but we're there with them and we're helping to, to um, um, show them what's out there as they take that step themselves to do it. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to throw a little uh, throw a little curveball at you guys. Uh, see if, see if we can adapt on the fly. Um, we have a question from a student who uh, would be an incoming third former or a freshman, um, and they want to know uh, what are the normal or required courses for that class. Um, I figured we could add on a little bit since we have folks in uh, coming into all of our classes, um, and maybe each of you could grab a, a class a year and talk about what a normal kind of course load uh, or course requirements would be for, for a year. So start with third form, fourth form, fifth form, sixth form. Uh, anybody have any preferences? <laughs> I'll take a shot at third form. And if I, uh, Kathleen, one. you can jump in here as well. We both teach uh, some of the third form sections, yeah. but as I understand it, uh, during the summer, there are some placement uh, activities that students do to figure out the section of whether they go in advanced courses or honors courses, particularly in the languages and maths. Uh, English in the third form is heterogeneously spaced, so we have all different levels of, of English together, and it's kind of a core course that introduces students to the various genres of, of English and literature and poetry and, and lots of writing. And I think part of the premise of a third form year anyway is sort of getting the foundation sort of solidified for what will be sort of your springboard for the entire four years here. So uh, students will take, uh, and obviously English is the most important course, that's the discipline I'm involved in, and uh, we like to sort of focus on that, but students are getting involved in the sciences, the arts, certainly history, which Kathleen can talk to, uh, but it's sort of a, a kind of getting set for the full career of Westminster. And then later on, and others will talk about this, there's an opportunity to take some AP courses in different disciplines, uh, in the fourth, fifth, and sixth form year. Uh, and then oftentimes in the sixth form year, students have covered a lot of our program and can start to get involved in some independent studies. But um, the expectation, I think, when you come in as a third former is that you'll take an English course, you'll take a science course, uh, you'll be in some level of language, and then uh, other courses in the arts and history and that sort of thing. So I'm sure I've missed a lot, but that's sort of the general sense of that first year. And it's an exciting first year. It's a uh, beyond the academic side, it's really sort of making the school your own and getting comfortable with the rhythms of, of a, a day, a week, a year. And it happens very quickly. Going back to the earlier question about activities, I always feel within the first two or three weeks, new students, particularly third formers, have sort of found the way this all works and sort of settle into um, sort of the, the, the life of Westminster. So it goes pretty seamlessly. May I chime in and hit that curveball? Um, my, uh, the arts, we sort of span third, fourth, fifth, and sixth form. Um, and as incoming third formers, I encourage you to sign up for an arts course. Um, I teach intro to theater. There's also our, our band and, um, our music program. We also have a dance program, which is pretty robust. Um, the dance chorus and the concert band, those are two year commitments. Um, and you'll earn a credit uh, by being a part of those performance ensembles. Uh, my class, you just have to take it once and you get your art credit. But we have found in um, many of our visual and performing arts, we also offer architecture and we offer drawing and painting classes as well. Uh, many of our students uh, take the initial course and then go on to take many of the other offerings that we have in our arts department. Uh, there are several music offerings uh, from music appreciation up to AP music theory um, and things of that nature. So if you play, if you sing, if you 
are interested in theater, if you're interested in dance, architecture, things like that, I encourage you as soon as you get on campus to sign up for one of those courses. And Miles, I'll take a stab at uh, math and sciences for all four years. Um, this is a typical track of a third form to sixth former in math. Typically it goes geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and then calculus or statistics in your senior year. Um, and that could depend or vary depending on where you come from um, prior to coming to Westminster. Um, from a science perspective, typically our, our third form students are taking physics, our sophomores or our fourth formers are taking uh, chemistry, junior year you're taking bio, and then the nice thing about uh, the senior your senior year in many aspects of, of the school is you can kind of select your interests um, and choose you know a neuroscience class or anatomy and physiology and so your sixth form year as I'm sure others will touch on is kind of this this um, you know while you have required classes it's this free year to kind of pick and choose where you feel passionate about and what, what you want to study. Um, and I'll, I'll jump in on the end of that. Um, each spring uh, from your fresh, uh, your third form um, through your fifth form year, you meet with your advisor and you talk about the classes that you would want to take the next year, keeping in mind what our graduation requirements are, which students meet um, as they move through, but then the older they get and as they move through the classes, they have the opportunity to fill in their schedule with pieces that they are more interested in, is more tailored to them, but you get to talk to your advisor or about or your other or your peers about what other classes have worked for them and they might be interested in and um, we've got a really incredible offering we have uh, you know 26 AP classes to choose from um, and we also encourage students um, not to, to push themselves out of their comfort zone try something um, maybe I don't know maybe I'll be good at comp gov maybe I won't be my grades have me there I'm right on the edge give it a shot um, and if you do construct that schedule pick that thing that's perfect for you, start it in the fall, and then parts of it don't work exactly, then you work with the director of studies office and you can arrange your schedule as it moves through to make sure it's pushing you in the right way and that you're, um, you're moving along in the momentum of your, of your academic journey that's appropriate for you. We've also had some uh, folks chime in and ask about um, reclassifying, repeating a year. Currently, maybe they're in ninth grade. Um, and then looking to enter Westminster in ninth grade as well. Um, and I think the thing to know uh, for, for all of our students is that you all have your own individual path. No, there's no one set curriculum for anyone. Uh, I think the most common questions that are coming up when you're reclassifying are, do I have to take a class again, right? And so the answer is no, usually. Uh, so if you've taken geometry already, and you're coming in as a ninth grader, you do not have to take geometry again as a ninth grader here. Uh, you'll move on to algebra two. Same thing with science. If you've taken physics already, you don't necessarily start with physics, you can move to chemistry. Or maybe you've had biology, you start with physics here, uh, then move to chemistry, and then move to those advanced sciences like Ms. Wassiker was talking about. Um, you don't necessarily have to retake biology here. So, uh, Next question is um, from Andrew. And I think maybe Ms. Devaney and Mr. Stevens might be, I think we can all speak to it, um, but you guys having been parents or of, of, of alumni or of uh, current students might be able to really um, speak to this experience. Um, Andrew wants to know uh, how the day students are kind of um, ingratiated in the community. Uh, what is that day experience like? Do you want me to go, Scott? Sure, jump on that one. Okay. Um, well, I think it's the part of that piece is that the day students, um, they make up a quarter of the, of the form and, um, it is our, our program is set, our schedule is set so that we have community events every single day. We have our sit down lunch. And so everyone, day students, boarders, regardless of where they're living or where they're entering a classroom, a classroom building at the beginning of the day, um, is gathering as a group. Um, those day students arrive in the morning, they do their classes just as everyone else would. They go through the community events, um, chapel, uh, meetings block, all those pieces together the same way. And then as they hit the end of the day, they do their, their extracurricular uh, activities and then they would stay on campus as they see fit to see teachers, et cetera. Perhaps they would stay for study hall and be picked up at the end of the day. 
Um, what I've seen over my time at Westminster is that during that freshman year, when you're relying as a day student on your parents to be the driver, literally, the driving you to school and driving your schedule, um, is you, you follow sort of specific pieces. It moves along as it goes. And then as you grow to be a, jun a sophomore and junior and a senior, you have more um, freedom um, with your driving license, et cetera. But what's so interesting to me is that oftentimes in my classes and I and on my teams, I don't know who's in a day student and who's in who's a boarder. Um, they're all part of the same programs. And yes, that's not that's one piece that 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 is um, who they are and their experience, but they're all doing the same thing. So I might have to ask to find out that information, either because a day student is there so much and they're so involved, they're hanging out in the dorms. I assume that that's indeed where they live. Um, I think we're really deliberate about making sure we integrate our day student population into our boarding population. Um, and our advisories are mixed as well, day and boarding, and our deans are paying attention to all that part. Because I know it's on day students' minds as they acclimate um, to our schedule. As usual, uh, Kathleen is spot on on all those uh, comments and reflections. I'd only add, there's also a sort of a flip side too, as our day community welcomes our boarding community to their homes in and around the area. I think oftentimes boarders, it's a nice, nice to get off campus for a little while at some point on the weekend and spend time with families. So you have that kind of reverse sort of direction of kids leaving campus to go spend time uh, with day students. And certainly uh, for boarders, there's the ability to take weekends to various people's homes in the area. And that's sort of a nice piece as well. I think, if anything, I think boarding students at times miss their family and oftentimes uh, getting off campus to be with day students families is a nice change in pace and kind of breaks a week up. But I think uh, Kathleen's point about sort of the overall integration that's part of our program, whether it's a team, whether it's a or whether it's a classroom, whether it's an advisory group, there's sort of a, a, a built in intermingling of kids. And I think ultimately, the longer you're here as a day student, the more time you'll spend on campus, as Kathleen alluded to, and the more involved you are in the sort of the non um, uh, sort of scheduled parts of the day in the evenings uh, leading up to study hall. I think with our new dining hall, there's many more day students that are eating dinner here and spending the evening hours here before going home. In the old days, we used to have a family style dinner that was exclusive to boarders. So day students were not a part of that. So I think the, the day student day is longer now in a positive way uh, as they stay involved with life on the hill. Miles, can I add one other one other piece? Um, it, it, it occurs to me too that um, I should mention the Horizons program here because we have um, our Horizons program, as I said, an outreach program with Hartford, we have that on-campus session in our during the summertime. So we find that huge, I mean, I think we had over um, uh, 45 day students involved uh, in volunteering in our summer program, both with uh, Covenant Prep and with Horizons in the summer. And that opportunity extends into the school year for students to be involved um, with Saturday academies that we offer each term when our Horizons students come from Hartford to our campus and our students either help or they actually run the program that our students from Horizons are doing. So um, that piece is another vehicle for um, involvement. Thank you. Uh, we have a number of questions about kind of what a typical day looks like. Um, I think we've, we've covered the curriculum a little bit, um, but maybe uh, Mr. Rashid, can you give us just kind of start to finish um, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. What, what your day looks like? So 8 a.m., I hope that you're finishing up your breakfast in the dining hall uh, before tackling your, your first block class, which would begin at 8.20 um and you'll you'll go through your classes um on a typical tuesday and friday uh to allude to some of the community events that uh ms devaney was talking about uh tuesdays and fridays we have our chapel service so uh you'll go to a couple classes and then around 10 15 uh you're heading over to the chapel for a chapel program where a faculty member an invited guest or many of our students um, get up and share something personal um, about their lives, their experiences in front of the whole community. Um, that's usually filled with, um, you know, uh, some student singers. Uh, sometimes we have acapella groups that come in that perform for us. 
Um, and then after that program, it, it's right back into class. But hey, you might have a free block after chapel. And we have this awesome student center uh, known as the Brockman Student Center. And you might want to go over and grab yourself a, a bagel uh, and a cup of coffee and hang out with your friends over there in the student center, play some pool. Um, there's also an arcade machine in there, um, foosball, uh, and then the, uh, the, the, the table hockey game. Um, so there's, there's that so that you can sort of uh, relax in between your day. But uh, you might want to go into the library and use one of our study rooms you know, during that free time so that you can uh, get yourself uh, prepared for the next class that you have. Um, so then you, you finish through one more period and then we have our family style lunch program uh, where it's on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're all gathered together at our tables uh, with our students. Those uh, tables rotate every two weeks or so. Um, so you'll, you'll be with the same people for a bit and then you'll switch it up and, and end up at a different table. Um, after lunch, your, your next bit of round of classes and then we have our afternoon program. Um, and I run the theater program in the afternoon um, and our auditions are open for every student on campus. That's whether you're playing a sport or not. Uh, you can exclusively choose Dramat as your afternoon program or you can, you can play um, a sport and also be involved in our plays. Um, and if you're not with me, then you're on the field somewhere with one of our outstanding coaches. Um, and then our fifth formers and sixth formers have the opportunity to do an exemption. If they're sort of specialists in a, a, a particular sport, um, they can do that for two terms with uh, the caveat that one of those three terms you have to, to compete athletically. Um, so then after the afternoon program is done, you get a little bit of a break. Uh, you can come and have some dinner. You can go to our gym and work out if you want, or just sort of hang out on the quad, depending on the weather. Uh, but you might be someone who likes to be out on the quad when it's cold. Um, <laughs> uh, you can do that. And then um, our study hall program uh, begins uh, in the dorm or in the library or in Sejong um, at 8 p.m. And that goes till 10 p.m. And then all of our boarders are checking in with their corridor supervisors at 10 p.m. And our day students are then going home and then getting ready for the next day. That's in a nutshell, but it's a <laughs> lot. And it's awesome. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Ms. Wassler. Miles, I'll just add, um, typically our game days are, are Wednesday, Saturday, which um, are usually... Uh, half days for us. So your classroom, your class day would go till about 12. You'd grab some lunch and if you have an away game, um, you'd take off uh, for your game or if you had a home game, you'd head down to the locker room. Um, so that day is, those two days are a little bit different than our normal Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Friday class day. And Mr. Rashid talked a little bit about the fact that, that folks can do both athletics uh, and theater uh, or just theater. Um, Kelly, tell us a little bit more about just kind of what the afternoon is like for an athlete, um, uh, kids who maybe play on your team or, or some of those other programs you oversee. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, as Kathleen mentioned earlier, uh, one of our uh, values is involvement. And so we make sure that each one of our students is involved in some afternoon, ac uh, ac afternoon activity every single day um, and each season. So whether it be a sport, theater, or community service, everyone's involved in something um, and just getting to know new people if, if you're a third former or a new student. Um, a typical you know, afternoon for an athlete would be your classes end um, and you head down to the locker room, wherever you're, whatever sport you're playing, um, and you get ready with your team and then you'll head out to practice um, around 3.30 typically, again on those Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Friday days. Um, and practices go from anywhere from 3.30 to 5.30, um, just in time for dinner to end. Um, and then on the Wednesday, Saturday days, again, those days end earlier and you're typically going to, to games each day. There's the occasional uh, off day game or off week game. So you could play on a Monday um, or a Tuesday, depending on your sport. Usually that happens more so in the winter. Um, but those games would not happen until after school ends. So those games would be later, let's say a five o'clock or a six o'clock game um, on those days. 
Uh, and uh, what about trying a new sport? Is that something that, that folks do a lot here in Westminster? Or anybody, you, know, you guys can hop in on that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, depending on the sport, we have uh, a number of teams. So we'll, we'll just take soccer, for example, we'll take our, our boys soccer. We have four levels of teams on boys soccer. So we go all the way from the first, which is typically our varsity team, down to the fourth team, um, which is our, our infamous quad squad we have here. Um, and so we have people on that team who have never, you know, tried soccer before, and this is the first time they're doing it just to be involved and to get some exercise. So there are a number of, of teams um, or sports throughout our school that have different levels of, of teams that where people are just trying the sport for the first time. I, I would also add, uh, I'm involved with a hockey program among others. And um, while we do not have a learned escape program, there's enough students that have not played competitive hockey, but have done a fair amount of skating and they're able to jump in, uh, for instance, with our thirds boys hockey team. And, and the way that's coached oftentimes, depending upon ability, it's almost a, a two tier team. There's sort of a more developmental aspect of it. And then those kids that have had a fair amount of youth hockey experience coming in. So it's not uh, untypical to have a handful of kids that can skate and kind of play pickup hockey, but have never played organized hockey before and they're able to get involved in there. And then I'd love to just put a quick shameless plug in for the girls golf team, which is not a learn to play golf program, but uh, it's a program we started about five years ago and it's growing. It's a very exciting league we're in. We've got a few blue chippers right now and I'm assuming there's a bunch of people on this call right now that are thinking about <laughs> girls golf for the future. So uh, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Miles, if I could just add to that part, um, with the three term, uh, the three seasons, the three terms, um, some students will come in and be like, "Oh, I know exactly what I want to do. I know I'm going to do this, then this, then this." Others come in and have no idea. Um, others come in being really good at one thing and really having no idea what they might do in, a, in another thing, or they're very used to being good at, let's say, soccer, um, but then they hit the winter time and they're and they're thinking I don't know what I'll do and their advisors suggest perhaps swimming and they're like I've never really done that but one I would say that that piece pushes kids um, to really stretch themselselves to um, and it and it does two things one you might find you're better at swimming than you thought you were or um, two you might be great at soccer and you're used to that and then you get into swimming and you see these other other athletes being incredible at what they're doing and you where you fit into that piece is very different than your experience in the past obviously that it helps push you and sort of develop you um along the way physically but it also i think um develops empathy it, it develops a different perspective um and 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 then there's the other story of the student who thought they were great at this one thing and then tried something else and it turned out that was the place they needed to be or wanted to be and they had more success than they even thought they would have. So um, I think all of these programs um, allow for a lot of different pieces, whether they're intended or not. I'd like to just add one more thing on that piece. I think um, this gets to the culture and the community of the school. One of the things that I love so much about Westminster is that sports at all levels are celebrated by the entire school. And, and we have obviously very elite varsity first team level players. And then we have, as I mentioned earlier, sort of more developmental or early to the sport players in our lower levels. But to give you an example, after a Wednesday or on a Monday following Saturday uh, contest, uh, either students or faculty will make, stand up and give sort of the sports announcement uh, during family style lunch. And it's really fun. They're, they're highlights that are going across all levels and all teams. And, you know, there are applauses and cheers as, as someone gets their first goal and their first soccer game of their lives and so forth and so on. So there is kind of a spree to sports and sports is a big part of this experience, but it, it has a way of galvanizing uh, the community. And then there's obviously the excitement of all school games where one team is featured uh, on a Friday evening, either under the lights or in the rink uh, or in the courts during the winter and the whole school turns out and there's a real strong fan base for that. And it, it's a, a real nice piece for the uh, esprit de corps of the school. Yeah. Scott, one of the, I think that um, passion around those lower teams has been a, a kind of signature uh, piece of the Westminster experience. I know it was when I was here. Um, our, my 
um, class, our, one of our valedictorians actually gave us his graduation speech about um, being a career uh, JV and thirds athlete. So uh, certainly a, a, a valuable part of Westminster. Um, I've got a question from Logan. Oh, sorry, Mr. Rashid, go ahead. I just wanted to, uh, to mention that one of the, the best kept secrets in our theater program is most of the time people associate theater with the performers. We have an amazing technical theater program, which a lot of our kids coming in have no idea that they can actually do that. Um, if you are good with building, if you're good with sound, if you're good with lighting, or if you wanna learn those things, we have an amazing afternoon program in technical theater where you're allowed to hone those skills and, and, and become you know, a great technician. And Mr. Rashid, while you're here, just um, give us a rundown on what, what a normal year of performances looks like. Um, in, in terms of uh, what's done in the fall and what's done in the winter? Yes. All right. So the, the fall, uh, we do a play, uh, which is usually a comedy, sometimes a tragedy. Um, and in the winter, we do a musical. So with the performers, I don't see them all the time until we get to the end. I sort of um, break off the rehearsal schedule uh, like we go through chunks of a production. Um, where I might see you for two hours one day, and then I won't see you again for two days, you know, for maybe only a half hour. But in our tech theater program, like you guys are there every day because you guys are building the world. Um, and you learn a lot about using our tools in a safe way. You learn a lot about um, how, you know, uh, taking the design from the page and then putting it, you know, building it up in the, in the scene shop and then bringing it to the stage. And in between that, we have um, guest speakers and, and programs that happen within the Werner Centennial Center. Uh, the technical theater students are the ones that help to organize and put all of that together so that when we're all sitting in the theater, it's our tech students who are sort of ushering that and shepherding um, the, the lighting and the sound for all of those events. Uh, the rehearsal process is for two hours, uh, just like our tech program. Um, but, you know, with, with the actors, you, you come in for a certain amount of time and then you go off unless, you know, if you're a lead, you're always there with me. Um, and then it's in the end when we get toward uh, uh, Tech Week, that's when we start to see everybody and we start to put things together. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, we've got Logan with a pretty popular question um, asking what a typical weekend is like at Westminster. Um, classes on Saturday. Um, and how do kind of students interact with each other on the weekends? I'll start with the, the notion of Saturday classes. I'm sure people have seen the fine print that that's part of our program <laughs> uh, before applying to the school. Um, it actually becomes fairly seamless. It's a half day as is Wednesdays, which obviously allows for afternoon commitments and games and that sort of thing. And uh, typically it's a short day. Uh, most students have three or less classes. And there is a little bit of a, well, I'll speak for my own class, a little bit of a, a casualness to Saturday morning classes and people bring in baked goods and uh, sometimes there's group work and that sort of thing. So it doesn't feel, at least to me, all that onerous. And then uh, the day quickly gains momentum as classes end. Um, you grab a bite to eat and then you're off to a game somewhere trying to jump on a bus, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a full day. I think what happens come, in my opinion, come Saturday night is people are pretty exhausted. It's been a busy week of classes and games and extracurriculars. And um, there, is an after, there is an evening activity program. And oftentimes there's one sort of main event on campus, uh, such as a dance or a karaoke kind of gathering, lots of different things that bring people together. But there's also a, a lot of downtime. Kids will just get, gather around uh, uh, a common room and watch a movie. We have bands going off campus to various places on Saturday nights and Sundays. And so there's more sort of a la carte choices of things to do. I, I try to, I'm fairly involved with the outing club and a lot of the outdoor things here and try to offer on Sundays trips to go hiking. Uh, we have a fishing group. We do ski trips to Vermont, which is nearby. So there's lots of things that may have groups of, you know, 10 to 15 people involved, but there, there's also a, a, 
I think a fatigue piece that comes to the end of the week in a good way and that Sundays are kind of a, a day to also recuperate and just sleep in and go to brunch and kind of start to imagine the week ahead. But there's uh, plenty to do for sure. Well, and, and with that, the, um, as Scott says, it's, it's as much as you want to do and as little as you have to do. Um, so that, that piece is really nice and there's a, a student program he, he mentioned, um, student activities. It's run by students um, with the faculty advisor who um, come up with all the things that are going on. So it's really a student's opportunity to lead what they want to do and then have those, uh, make those announcements that are family style lunches and then everything is out there for a student to choose from how they want their weekend to look. Also, I'm sorry, Kelly. Um, also on Saturday evenings, um, there, in addition to that main event that Ms. Mr. Stevens was talking about, um, there's also, uh, oftentimes we'll have open houses in some of our dorms, which can get people in uh, to enjoy snacks and then see their friends and things like that. Uh, we also, from the Dean's office, um, we allow overnight uh, for day students to stay on campus and vice versa for, um, students uh, that are boarders to either stay with a day student or to uh, go to their respective homes. Uh, we facilitate those, those on campus overnights and the, the overnights if you're leaving campus through the Dean's office. We're also very fortunate with our location um, that when there is some downtime and it's nice outside, our students can walk into Simsbury Center um, and go to Starbucks or, or get a bite to eat. Um, and then we're very close to, to West Hartford. So if students do have um, Ubering permissions, they can, they can go out to dinner with their friends in West Hartford and kind of get off campus for a little bit, um, which is a really nice opportunity. We have vans too, they can take if they wanna go. Yep. So we've got time for two more questions for the faculty. Uh, first one is, a, is an immensely popular question um, and hopefully a fairly easy one to answer. Um, from Aaron, uh, what is the dress code at Westminster? <laughs> from the male perspective um i i think i'm identifying uh in 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 the male perspective of the dress code um i do have some slacks on as well oh, nice, uh, nice. and then um i can't lift my foot up because i'm not that flexible but um <laughs> you know a pair of uh you know sperry's or or or, or all brights are, are sort of welcome as shoe dress code um but that's from the male perspective this is our dress code. And if uh, we're in exam dress, I lose this blazer, I lose this tie, I unbutton my top button here on my Oxford, or I'm wearing a polo shirt tucked in uh, with, with some, some slacks and the shoes of choice. Um, and I would offer for the girls, um, we have, um, when you're wearing pants, you need to wear a, vis a second layer and that second layer needs to be visible. So it might be a, a a sweater over a shirt, a sweater over a collared shirt, et cetera. Um, and the idea of it, and if you wear a skirt, you don't have to wear that second layer on top. But ultimately, the big picture is that it needs to echo the formality of the boys' dress code. Thank you. Um, and last one, we'll just go, go down the line um, one at a time. I'll, I'll let whoever wants to hop in first and start. Uh, but one of my favorite questions, um, uh, and it's from Michaela. What does grit and grace mean to you? Scott, I thought you'd want to go first on that one. Uh, sure, I'll jump in. I, I, uh, uh, it, it is a, a fairly uh, uh, unique uh, term or motto to the school. And I think it's, uh, to a certain extent, and, and you can look at it a lot of different ways, but it reflects those values that are embedded within our community and all that we do. And if you think about the grit and the work ethic and the competitiveness and the sportsmanship and all the things that kind of um, are part of sort of the DNA of the school that sort of push us to be better versions of ourself would be the grit. And I think the grace would be sort of the civil side of the way we interact as a community and our support of each other, our reference earlier to sort of teams celebrate at all level that, that we are a very civil community. We um, interact um, 
amongst different grades, between grades, faculty and, and uh, students. And I always say to, the advice I say to any prospective candidate is, you're gonna have great friends here that are in your grade and in other grades as well. That's just the way the school works and that's part of the grace. You're also going to establish some very, very strong friendships with faculty. And I think that's another element of the grace that when you leave Westminster, you will leave the space, but you will not leave these friendships and relationships behind. And I think again, you know, taking grit and grace as sort of the foundation of all that in terms of the way we behave, the way we compete, the way we try to improve, and then the way we interact are uh, fundamental to what we're all about. So that's one of about a thousand ways you can view that, but certainly uh, it strikes a chord with me. Grit and grace in my domain is that kid that struggles with hitting the high notes or um, can't get his or her lines down, the kid that drops all the lumber in the tech shop, <laughs> um, but doesn't give up and, and continues to, to steadily work at that so that they get better. In the end, that kid that couldn't hit those high notes is hitting everything. That kid that couldn't get their lines together is helping other people learn their lines. That kid that's dropping all the lumber all over the scene shop is the chief architect and is the one that's like leading people in, in, in building things. It's, it's being able to, to push through your struggles because you will experience them while you're at the school, but, but having that confidence and building that confidence um, with your peers, with your coaches, with your directors, with your teachers and working through all of that so that in the end you become that flower that you're trying to blossom into and not giving up on that. You know, I think we can see grit and grace in, in every aspect of Westminster's community, but um, on the sports field, I think our coaches, um, you know, we prepare our teams to be gritty, right? We want them to be hardworking and determined and, and you know, work as hard as they possibly can every day in practice and in the games. But at the end of the day, I think the most important thing is, um, do we do that with grace, right? Are, are we the classiest team? Um, are, are we good people? And I think, you know, winning and losing is one thing. Obviously, I'm, I'm super competitive and I want to win. But if we win the, the person battle at the end of the day, if we're the best team on the field and the referees are kind of complimenting us, um, the other coaches are complimenting us for being for being graceful. I think that's that's the most important uh, piece of the whole thing. Um, what everyone else said, but um, I would would offer that uh, it's the hard work. It's the persistence, it's the tenacity, that's the grit. Um, I think it's an outstanding motto. It was one of the first things that I was like, well, what's that school all about, grit and grace? Because I, I didn't know much about Westminster before I got here. And um, to me, it's one of the things that pulled me in and one of the things that's kept me here. Um, I think the grace ultimately on a, a big level for me is the community pull. It's the, uh, it's the, um, you know, community character balance and involvement, how they all work together um, at a small school of 400 um, and, a, and this great faculty group. I mean, I look at this panel, I'm like, oh my God, this is a team I wanna be on. Like that's, that's kind of Westminster. It's a team you wanna be on for Grit and Grace. Excellent, thank you guys. Um, we're gonna take a quick break here. Uh, faculty members, you guys can, can log off if you like. Um, if any of you out there do have questions for, for these four, um, or for me, of course, um, all of our contact information is up on our website. They'd be happy to answer emails, um, point you in the right direction, connect you with anyone here, I'm sure. So.